We are very late beginning the vlog. It is 16 hours and 6 minutes into Friday, uh, December 4th, uh, 2020. I had to think about the date there for a minute. <laughs> I have a tendency to think for some reason that today is the 5th, but uh, it's not. Ugh. As I said, I was in the midst of a deep dive. It took me a couple hours to get through it. Um, how should I put this? We have a tendency to think that we are living in unique times. We have a novel virus, right? It, we usually hear the term novel, meaning new or nova. Or, you know, they come up with these, the media comes up with these terms that are absolutely fantastic. And you begin to realize, if you have a good grasp of history, that we're living in a fantasy world. And a large chunk of these so-called top experts uh, are living in their own fantasy world. I have an uncle who calls himself an urbanist. And he has been a professor at MIT and a number of different universities for years, for more than 30 years, talking about the, 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 the idea of creating the, the ultimate urban environment. He's been consulting on this and that. And you look at the cities in the United States, particularly the urban areas, the urban blight, uh, place, particularly places like Baltimore, and see that this, guy, this is... They, they've done, the, these people who have been paid these fantastic salaries have done absolutely nothing. And yet they extol the virtues of urban development. And they're celebrated, they're given awards, you know, invited to lectures. All pure fantasy. None of it reality. And as the academics, these intellectuals, create a Nothing. There's no way to describe it other than a hallucination. They live within this fantasy world of a hallucination that they think is real, and so they can't imagine. People are saying, "Well, why can't people? Why can't these top doctors see what's going on?" Because they're in a fantasy world. They're completely divorced from reality. You might as well be doing LSD or whatever drug you want to choose, because there is no reality there. To give you an example, and they say, well, this is not new. And I said, because you got to know your history. Let's go back into history. And the thing is, back in history, they had come up with the term, the term moron and idiot was not simply a term tossed about lightly. It was a, a, a progressive term to describe people who couldn't fend for, the th fend for themselves or take care of themselves. They needed others to take care of them for them. This is the way right, re units were created. Units were created by uh, an aristocracy intelligentsia, the, 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 the upper parts of society who were, uh, 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 you know, civilly minded. They wanted to help the poor people, so-called. And they, these people couldn't manage their own money, they couldn't, so they created these unions that would manage the money for them. Of course, they manage the money for the, the, these morons, these moron, you know, working class who, you know, that's what they were classified as. They were classified as morons. They were working class. They couldn't uh, read or write. Uh, uh, there was a lot of issues. And they did it for a fee. <laughs> this is how the unions were created. The unions were created to, to handle the, the, the affairs of morons. They were there to help people out. They were progressive. They were being humanitarian. But what happens when that much money comes into a play and the amount of people that you have under, under your control, other forces come in, uh, other ideas come in, and now you have something entirely different. And because what happens is that you have this untapped force there, this the, the, the force of the morons, the force of the masses. This is talked about by H.G. Wells. It's talked about by Karl Marx and the opiate of the masses. It's talked about uh, the, by Sigmund Freud with the bewildered herd, uh, treating human beings as a herd of animals that can be herded back and forth 
This is the term sheeple. This is where the term sheeple actually comes from. Then, of course, you have his nephew, Edward Bernays, and, of course, his uh, si uh, sister, uh, Anna Freud. All of whom, were, were in, in many ways, in terms of, Anna Freud was a complete disaster in her life. Edward Bernays was very successful. And a large chunk of what's going on today, the marketing, what you see the, called the PR and the way the press works, that's all Edward Bernays is. is, is creating the, it's called creating the narrative, creating consent, engineering consent. How do you get someone to go to war? You create an enemy. You parade the enemy around in uh, new, great news articles. You, you, you have your, your people, your PR people in the press areas so they can pu push these stories, stories forward bringing up in the headlines, they, they, they do cr what called creative writing. A large chunk of what you're reading is not necessarily true. They have a kernel of truth in there, but the rest of it is all fiction. And that doesn't bother them, because that's their job. Their job is to promote something. And in this case, it's promoting war. Oh, we have these evil terrorists. We have to go to war against this. We have the war on terrorism. We have the war on drugs. We have the war on this and the war on that. We're always going off to war. Never asking the question, well, who are these enemies? Where did they come from? What, what, how did you determine these people are our enemies? And why do we have to go to war? Isn't there other means of dealing with this? But yet, we listen to our top, and they, they bring up, they don't say, give, they don't give you a specific name. We have top doctors, we have top scientists, we have top government officials. These are people all at the top. These are people in positions of authority that you have to listen to. Otherwise, you're crazy. Now, have they brought any proof for it? Have they actually brought anything else for it other than that? No. And this is what, what, what I see on both sides of the equation, both left and right. They're not arguing when they're arguing. They're not arguing about the particulars of the issue. They're arguing issues of status. Well, I am a this, and I am a that, and I have this certification, and I have that certification. And they argue back and forth, not about the actual topic, but about their qualifications and qualifications and certifications. In other words, they're talking about their, they're, they're talking around the subject, not actually talking about the issue at all. And I can go back to my grandmother, because my grandmother come, it was sort of in many ways a product of what was going on around the 1930s, and these people who believed that these groups of people called morons and idiots needed to be taken care of and ironically one of the people one of the groups of people who were lumped into this progressive terminology of have, of being feebly minded right feebly minded is a, is, is a categorization of a moron and an idiot morons and idiots are classifications of mental capacity so is feeble minded it's within those Within the framework of moron and idiot, you have high-functioning, low-functioning, and, and, and non-functioning morons and idiots. And the high-functioning ones were, were, in, were in the feeble-minded area. They were sort of, they need to be taken care of, but not as much. But still, uh, they had the policy that if you were uh, 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 mid to low, you'd be sterilized. Uh, to, uh, uh, to point this out as, as a bit of evidence, go look at the Three Stooges. Uh, there's a TV show that was on uh, years ago, Black and White, that was actually filmed in the 1930s. Uh, and it's about morons. And people say, oh, that's all slapstick, that's comedy. Well, no, it's satire because at that point in time, if you were classified as a moron, you couldn't hold a job because you couldn't sign a contract. You couldn't sign your own name. And so what happens is that you couldn't open a bank account, you couldn't go to the bank, you couldn't have a bank card, you couldn't have anything... To in, or, in order to, so, so, to in order to have a stabilized life, my grandmother, because women at this at this time and even up until 1975, women were classified as feebly minded. They had to have their husbands, or if their husbands died, my my, my grandmother was a, a widow. Uh, she had to have an uncle or, or or some other male in the family hand her handle her financial affairs. She couldn't go to the bank herself and deal with the mortgage or whatever because she was classified as feebly minded. What happened to these people? What, what where, the, where does this all end up? Well, these top doctors didn't, you know, 
came out and said, well, li allowing these people to live is cruel. Because look at how bad they are. They can't do this, they can't do that. They li they're living a horrible life. They can't live the way we live. They can't have the life we have because they're morons. They're idiots. So what, what was the solution? What, was, what did, the, what did the, the, the UN at that time come up with? Sterilization. This was initially started in the United States. Who was very popular in the United States? Well, Adolf Hitler was very popular in the United States in the 1930s. Same thing with the Nazi Party. It was a very popular notion. So when they started euthanizing people, and this was done in the hospital by top doctors and top nurses, top officials, it was all well documented that these feebly, these feebly minded people, these morons and idiots, would start to be euthanized. Well, where did it end up? Well, it ended up with the death camps of Auschwitz and Buchenwald. You ended up with six million Jews dead. Why? Because no one thought it was a, no one thought it was unusual. They thought that this was normal. They were euthanizing people who couldn't fend for themselves, people who were in pain. They weren't killing these people, just killing them. We were euthanizing. We were putting them to sleep. These are the terminology that come out in PR and these promotional things that tell you, oh. Everything's okay. Well, everything's not okay. <laughs> They're going to die. And we're back in that situation. If this sounds familiar, that's because we're back in the same situation. New Zealand has just legalized euthanasia. They're talking about not allowing people to live who are critically ill or terminally ill. We know a girl who... In, in, in our church help, helps uh, our church violates uh, uh, <laughs> the tax laws because in the tax law a charity is not allowed to help out people directly but we do we help out people directly and there was this girl in the Netherlands and she has a brain tumor she was on a list with a doctor say well sorry we can't do anything for you so they flew her to Germany to perform an operation on the brain tumor. But of course, it had to be paid for because it was done on a pro under a private system. The public system wouldn't do it. She was on a list that said, sorry, we can't help you out. They wouldn't let her die. We're, this, this, this is 2020. They say, oh, all, all the kids committing suicide because of the lockdowns. And what's going on with the lockdowns? 2020. We're back in this, and it's all because of these top doctors, top scientists, like Dr. Fauci. There is no difference between Dr. Fauci and a lot of these data scientists and Dr. Joseph Mengele. There's no difference. They're experimenting on people. This is Bill Gates. Bill Gates has come out openly and talk, talked about eugenics, about who should live and who should die. And unfortunately, this is being passed along to the young people as how to be environmental stewards, stewards of the environment, how to take care of the of environment. Well, people are parasites and you need to get rid of them. Only a certain number of people need to, are, are allowed to live. And they're going to decide who's going to live. Well, of course, they're not going to include themselves in this death count, but what did I say? Are you sure that you're not on this list? Of people who are going to die, you're not back in this. You're, you're in this. We're back in this eugenics thing again. Are you sure you're not on the list? Anyways, uh, for the Democrats who voted uh, Biden, in, well, this is what you voted for. We're back in the situation of Auschwitz. We're at the beginning of Auschwitz. This is how it all started. So soon. That's because uh, we just had a delivery, and uh, that means unpackaging. Here's the package. I'm not too sure what this is, but uh, 
we will give it a go anyways and, and see what Santa brought us. And here's point of opening. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Very nice. It's uh, for my next adventure in the kitchen. And it's uh, chocolate making. And this is a mold for to make chocolate. Speaking of which, I'm cooking. <laughs> there we go, out of its plastic. And there we go. A mold to make chocolate. So I can make my, start making my own chocolate bars, chocolate bars now. And that's what I'm going to be doing over the next week or so. Is, uh, working on my chocolate making. Uh, I do like candy, so I got this. I wanted to try it out. It looks pretty good. And, uh, this will be the beginning of my, uh, next adventure into chocolate making. I have to photograph this anyway, so I'll just leave it out for now. <laughs> so, well, that's it. That's, that's the package opening. There's the bus. I never, my hair is never fixed in any of these videos. Anyways, uh, anyways, it is uh, 14 hours and uh, 26 minutes into the uh, fifth day of uh, December 5th, 2020. It's uh, Saturday. It's going to be time for the weekend vlog, but the weekend vlog is going to be a ride vlog. We're ending the vlog for Friday. I should have ended it at 4 o'clock in the morning, but I just wasn't sort of feeling feeling it at the time. So I didn't do that. Uh, anyways, uh, to keep in keeping with the theme of... of the vlog, which is in many ways uh, sort of an indictment of society that, that we're, where we're heading... And this is also in, line, in keeping with anti-establishment, that more often than not, these groups who say they're anti-establishment, like Black Lives Matter or uh, Antifa, are not actually anti-establishment. They're actually working for the establishment. They're there to create the narrative, to create consent, as uh, Edward Bernays would say. And these are your key, your key people, is Edward Bernays, Anna, Anna Freud, uh, Stanley Milgram, uh, Dr. Phillips and Bardo, take a look at these people here. That's the Stanford University experiment. And you'll understand that a large chunk uh, where a uh, where everything is coming from is not new. It's been there before. It's been understood. And that a large chunk of what's going on today is this whole thing of creating the narrative, including uh, the war on terrorism, the war on this and the war on that. Anytime there's a war or some of these, these officials come out, they're playing to a playbook that was written a uh, long time ago. It's more than a hundred, it's about, I would say more than a hundred years old because uh, it's, it's 2020. The playbook was written around 1915, 1915. Uh, so it's a, it's an early right, but it, it, it sort of lived on uh, because it had its usefulness. And, uh, it's about, you know, what happened in the uh, sort of the uh, the 20th century, if you will, was you had a moving away from the monarchy. You had all the, the, these revolutions against the monarchy in the 1800s, and so the 1900s was this continuous shift towards democracy. 
And the elites at the top, the aristocracy, didn't want to lose that control, so they've tr kind of figured out, uh, and we're trying to figure out how to gain that control back again. Uh, and this is sort of the scenario that's going on. And we go through these periods in society that you have these so-called social engineers, these progressives, who come up and try these new ideas on how to bring control back to society, but they never end up working out. In our latest era, the we'll call, we should be calling the modern era, is the Timothy Leary, uh, Timothy Leary era, and, and also credited to Ram Dass, uh, of postmodernism, where the 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 reality of the world is viewed as a hallucination; it's not real. Uh, everything is some, not, everything is a simply concept. And so there, so what happens is that anything you want to do goes because well, it's all concept. There's no, no reality there, and as long as you enjoy your happiness, whatever your happiness is, and this includes hedonism. This is again something to look up and look up moral theory. You need to Google moral theory. But again, the number of people who are going to do this are very few and far between. Typically, it's understood that I would say anywhere between 70 and 80 percent of society will unquestionably follow uh, what the government tells you to do. The government's telling you to report people who are having unusual parties. Well, are, they, are they too large and not social distancing problem? Call up, report them, the police will come and take care of them. This is what happened in Nazi Germany. This is what happened in Stalin's uh, 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 commun under Stalin's communism. You know, your neighbor's not doing something or saying something bad against the government. You call them up, the government comes and takes them away. The way they go. They encourage children. This is what you see uh, with the environmental movement. It's the children who are leading the way. They are the... Um, you know, with the Earth Rangers and so on. They're the ones leading the adults. And will they inform on their parents, on their, their adults, who are who who are doing something wrong against the environment? You betcha they will. They will they I've heard it from a very I've heard it from a six year old saying, That's abuse. I'm gonna go call the police. It's not that they, it was actually abuse, it, it was perceived as abuse from the six year old. Uh, you know, it's, it, you, 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 you hear someone fighting with, you know, a kid fighting with an adult. You assume that the adult is abusing the child, but maybe the the because the, the, they're in in church, they're lit, lit candles. You don't want the kid to stick the finger, to stick their finger in the flame and get burned. So you, you know, you, you tell them, no, 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 don't do that. The six year old will see this and say, oh, that's abuse. The adult is abusing the child from preventing him from sticking his finger in the flame. And then that'll, that kid will end up calling the police. <laughs> and this is how, we wonder why, how all those Jews ended up getting sent to, not, to the, the concentration camp like in Auschwitz. Well, George Soros was one of the people, as a kid, who was informing on his neighbors. He was of Jewish descent, and I'm not going to say he's Jewish because he not he denies that he is a Jew. Uh, he uh, has an atheistic belief, and so he is not typically he is not defined properly under rabbinical law as a Jew. He is of Jewish origin. His parents were believing Jews, but he he isn't, and so in his mind he is not a Jew. And he, this goes from way, way back. It's, that's it. Most of society, including those that were initially target, that were, were targeted, won't comply. Oh, it's only a minority of people. They're only, only, only taking away a few people. And it's not until it started getting to the point where it was too late, where they started rounding up people on mass, you know, in mass, large groups of, of Jews. That's when people started getting. Hey, wait a minute, we shouldn't be doing this. But at that point in time, it was too late. And the thing is, they went around like Donald Trump's trying to do. You know, we know that the, 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 there was a lot of fraud in, in, in the election. You can see it; it's very obvious. But the courts are going. Oh, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. No, no problem. And it's simply going through the motions. Same thing with a lot of the politicians are doing the same thing. You see this in the media. Well, what happened? Because there was media back in Nazi Germany. There was radio and there was newspaper. 
What were you seeing in the newspapers? You were saying, oh, the Jews are evil, the Jews are bad, you, these people, also, the Jews are sick, these people ha are inbred, there's a lot of inbreeding in there, and they've got these problems, they need to be euthanized, and we're going to go take care of them. That's what you were seeing in the paper. So people said, okay, no problem. 80% of the people, 70 to 80% of the people, 70 to 80% of the people, including all of the bureaucrats, followed the dictate that they believed, and they were killing people. Near the end, they were killing people en masse. The whole groups. Started off one by one, started off in the hospitals, started off with the doctors, started off with the top scientists, the top doctors recommending this, and then it finally ended up with a large concentration camps like this are in uh, uh, Auschwitz and uh, uh, Buchenwald. This is what you, you go to any Holocaust museum. Take a look at what happened there. Understand that that was the end of the road. That this had been going on from 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 the 1930s. Look up look up the sterilization programs of the 19th. Look up the term. Do a historical search on the term moron. And you'll begin to, begin to understand that this is a, is a process that society moves into these conditions by these elites, these, these top doctors, these top scientists, leading them into ideas that they think might be beneficial. But they will never admit they're wrong. 